Hey everybody, today's topic is related to a, a recent posting uh, video I did. Uh, this one's about vacuum. This video is uh, to give some answers to some questions I got after my last video about engine vacuum and trying to explain why engines have vacuum and, and what, what it means. And I got some I got some questions back, and there were a couple of different ones. Uh, one was, gee, um, isn't vacuum inefficient? Isn't it wasteful? Um, isn't there some way you could get, get rid of vacuum and still have the engine run? Um, and what about uh, turbocharged or supercharged engines? Is there something, you know, is the vacuum different in them? And so, um, this one's going to kind of address um, uh, conventional engines, you know, again, a little deeper as to why do we have vacuum and could you get rid of it. Um, something called stratified charge. Um, I'm going to talk about diesels a little bit. And uh, I'll touch on supercharged turbocharge. And again, this is about, you know, some, some more of the uh, technical insight into vacuum and why we have it and what we do with it. So this is a chart from my last one. And by the way, I'm going to try to put uh, a link up uh, to the past video so that I don't have to repeat a lot of things. And if you want to get a little more depth in that, you know, you can go on back to it. But essentially, you know, the is every conventional gasoline engine ha uh, generates vacuum in its operation. Um, that vacuum is higher uh, when the engine makes more power for a given RPM and throttle opening. So if you're like idling and the engine wants to idle faster without cracking the throttle open, say because you change spark advance, you'll generate more vacuum. And it's um, generally higher Vacuum means better efficiency, yet on the other hand, more vacuum means pumping losses. So it's kind of a, a conundrum, you know, they're, they're um, opposing each other. A, a typical old school V8 engine back from the 70s or 80s, um, 60s, 70s, 80s, um, typically you'd have 15 to 21 inches of uh, mercury vacuum uh, when the engine was idling depending on your cam and spark timing and a whole bunch of other things. But it was pretty much normal. And we just accepted it. And, you know, again, last video was, you know, why is it there and what does it look like? Well, again, to the questions I got, which is, you know, why do you have to have vacuum? And I added in, why do we even have a throttle in the first place? Um, why don't you just uh, come up here to the fuel injector and just give it more fuel? Well, we're going to talk about that a little. So, a conventional gasoline engine is what we call a uh, homogeneous charge. Homogeneous charge means that uh, you have good mixing between the fuel and the air through the whole cylinder. Um, so typically you have a fuel mist, it's very, very tiny droplets. Hopefully, with a hot engine, they'll evaporate and they'll be, you know, microscopic droplets, evenly distributed. Um, noting this comment about swirl, um, typically engines these days are designed uh, with the ports, the intake ports, uh, in such a way that, that the airflow swirls, again, to help that mixing and make it even. But you have a cylinder that's got um, all of that fuel distributed and you could have a fuel injector, you could have a carburetor, you could even have direct injection if you wanted and still have homogeneous charge. That's the basis. You want to have a 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio approximately. Um, you know different engines will be um, depending on the composition of your fuel and whether you got alcohol. Separate topic but stoichiometric which means there's a a molecule of air for every molecule of fuel so that it burns completely is right around 14.7. Now what happens is that if you want the engine to idle and go slow and make low power 
you have to limit the amount of fuel that the engine gets or it's going to want to take off and go fast, right? So, again, in a conventional homogeneous charge engine, you do that with a throttle plate. And you want to thin out the air, just like if it were high altitude, right? You, you, want, you want the air thinner because you're back to this 14.7 uh, to 1, right? So you got a cylinder, you want to fill it with air and fuel to make just the right amount of power to keep the engine running at idle, right? Just at idle. You need a very small amount of fuel, so you need a very small amount of air to go with that fuel so it doesn't go too fast. And so the way we thin out the air is with a throttle plate, right? The piston pulls down, you get suction on that throttle plate, the air gets thinner, and then you feed the amount of fuel that you need to get 14.7, uh, to get the proper mixture in a well-mixed one and, and have the engine produce small amounts of power. So thin air is, you know, it's closed throttle gives you high vacuum, which is less mass of air and less mass of fuel, and so it makes less power. And on one hand, um, you have the drag on the piston from creating the vacuum, and on the other, you have the less amount of power because you've got less fuel being burned. So now if you go to wide open throttle, then what? Well, if the throttle's open, you got what I'll call thick air for the sake of discussion today, and it's low vacuum, so you get more mass of air into the cylinder, more mass of fuel, a lot more of these little droplets, and then a lot more power and maximum power, depending on the, you know, it'll be maximum power for whatever speed the engine is running. If it's, um, when you go to wide up and throttle, it wants to go, right? But the goal again is 14.7 uh, grams of air to a gram of fuel or 14.7 pounds of air. It's just, you got to keep the ratio the same, but with a full cylinder with thick air, I'll call it, with maximum mass of air in your cylinder, you need more fuel and you get more power. So that's how the normal engine operates. So if you didn't want to do that, what would you do next? How could you run an engine without a throttle plate? How could you reduce the power without a throttle plate? Because without a throttle plate, with it open, um, you need all that fuel and all that power. How do you how do you back it off? Well, there are some ways. So over the years, a lot of people have experimented with something called stratified charge, and to varying levels of success, um, some like the Honda, this CVCC, um, was actually an engine from the 1970s, and uh, they sold that one. Ford worked for years on something they called Proco. There have been a lot of others. I know General Motors worked on some. There have been a lot of experimental engines because this, be, this would be what you would wish you could do, right? So a lot of people have experimented with this because there are advantages to it. But what the, the main thing that you try to do is uh, inject, put the fuel injector in the cylinder, direct injection, and, and inject a rich mixture that doesn't get well mixed. So it's, it's rich in the middle and it's lean around the outside. So overall, your fuel mixture is lean. You have this rich mixture that you can ignite easily because it's near the spark plug. Um, the rest of the cylinder is going to have very little fuel. It will be lean, but because you've got a flame going, the fuel will tend to burn completely. And you could run, in principle, you could limit the amount of fuel you use and limit the throttle that you need so that you would have to open the throttle more uh, or maybe even not have, not, or maybe not even have a throttle at all. And then some engines, I, one of my slide a couple back talked about pre-chambers, and I believe Honda did this one, but there, there are other schemes. But some of them, a pre-chamber is a small chamber off of the, you know, say in the cylinder head, off of the main combustion chamber, 
where you inject fuel and you have your spark and you may even have a small intake valve where it's actually bringing air into that pre-chamber also. Uh, but you, you would inject your fuel, spark, flame would go down into the main cylinder. And whether it's in the main chamber or whether it's in a pre-chamber, overall the mixture is lean. Now, from, a, from an emissions standpoint, and everybody's got to meet air quality issues, um, these engines were really good for hydrocarbon and carbon monoxide emissions. Those were low but nitrogen oxides would be high. And there are two things. One is you have more nitrogen oxide than you did before. And two is today everything, everything has a three-way catalytic converter. And if you go back into some of my earlier videos, um, I have one posted on three-way catalytic converters and what that's all about. So some of these stratified charge kind of, you know, they, they had an extra challenge because uh, they had to deal with this lean mixture problem. So then, I'll call this the ultimate stratified charge. This, this is me talking, right? Um, diesels. So where do diesels come in? Well, diesel is kind of the model that a gas stratified charge engine wishes it could do. A gasoline-fired stratified charge. Uh, diesel is compression ignition, though. Um, the gas engine, you still want spark ignition. But a diesel is no throttle, no spark, no vacuum. And when I say no vacuum, I mean there's a little bit of residual loss in the intake runners, but the vacuum is so doggone close to zero. I mean, you, you design those engines so they don't have vacuum. So you get rid of the throttle and the spark, no vacuum. Sounds pretty good, right? So how do you make that run? Well, it's again, it's compression ignition. So you have a very high pressure fuel injector that injects fuel very close, generally very close to top dead center. And, and the timing, you, you'd kind, I'm being broad brush, but you would time the fuel injector a lot like you would time a spark plug. You figure out what the combustion delay is in the fuel and diesel fuel is different than gasoline, it combusts a little slower. You inject the fuel at the point where you want it to burn. The compression pressure uh, heats up the, the air so that when you inject the fuel it burns immediately. Spontaneous ignition from, from the temperature and pressure of, of the mix. Now, in a diesel, Again, the fuel mixture is always lean, always lean. And it was told to me once upon a time in a, in a combustion engines class about diesels was that it was a reminder that you can keep adding fuel to the point where raw fuel is rolling out the tailpipe onto the ground and you won't use all the air in the cylinder. It'll smoke like mad um, it'll be wasteful, um, but in the time that you have to inject the fuel, because it's not homogenous, you don't have time to mix. So you fire that shot of fuel into the diesel combustion chamber. It needs to burn right now. It doesn't have time to spread out and mix, which a normal port fuel injected gas engine, you'll inject that fuel on the intake stroke or or at the, when the piston is low, and, and then as it's coming up, it's got time to swirl and mix and spark and burn. When you inject fuel in a diesel, it burns quickly. And so, so the point being, fuel mixture is always lean. The power that you get out of a diesel is based on uh, how much smoke can you put up with. Now, from an emission standpoint, once again, you're back into this nitrogen oxide um, emissions, and NOx means there are multiple oxides. I think there's NO2, NO3. Um, nitrogen and oxygen at high temperature combine into different, um, often unstable um, uh, compounds. But you're controlling the power in this engine by the amount of fuel. And 
it always has a lot of air in the cylinder. The cylinder is full of air, but you're not burning all the air that's in the cylinder. That's the crux of that one. And that's how you survive without having a throttle. Then I'm going to go back to gas engines now. Um, if you had one that was supercharged, and it doesn't really matter if it's a gear supercharger, um, a turbo supercharger, an exhaust-driven turbo, it doesn't matter. Uh, pressurized air being forced into the cylinders to make power is supercharging. It could be turbo, doesn't matter. Um, when you do that, and it also doesn't matter whether the supercharger is ahead of the throttle or behind the throttle. Engines are sometimes done blow through. Some of them are drawn through. It's, um, again, it, it doesn't matter a whole lot. You still, you still need the throttle closed to limit power so that the engine can idle. So at light load or even at cruise, if you want low power, you're not going to boost because you'll want vacuum happening in the in the intake runner. You'll want to still have vacuum on the intake stroke so that you can inject the small amount of fuel and limit the amount of power the engine makes. Then as you go into the throttle and ask for more power, then you'll start to build boost as you open the throttle. If the, if, you know, if the supercharger is behind the throttle, you're, gonna, you're going to throttle the supercharger, right? It's, you just kind of think of it in that way, that the throttle is restricting air to keep the engine from making too much power. So as you, as you want to make power and you tip into it, at some point, you're going to get the throttle open enough that you start making boost. And I know that if you've got a turbo, the turbo has to be able to spin up and, and produce that boost. But it comes off of a throttle request, essentially. And again, I know I'm oversimplifying some things, but just to give you the kind of the principles. Diesels are even a little simpler. You still have no vacuum. You have no throttle. Your fuel volume, how much fuel you inject into the cylinder, controls your power. So the more boost that you have, the more air that you have, the more fuel you can inject. And again, I know what I said a few minutes ago is you can never inject enough fuel to uh, use all the air in the cylinder. But if you can compress the air and get more pressure on it, get more air in around that fuel injector so that when the fuel comes in it can find more air right every molecule of fuel has got to find molecules of air uh, you'll make more power so it's more boost is more air is more fuel is more power and I say more is more fuel because if you have more air you can inject more fuel so I hope that helps a little bit um, you know, the stratified charge is a really cool concept and a lot of people have worked on it because they would really love to get gasoline engines that would run without a throttle or without much of a throttle. So, you know, I mean, stratified charge is what everybody kind of wanted to go to, but with today's challenges in emissions regulations and, and so forth, um, there, I don't know of a really uh, good one in today's marketplace. Um, diesel certainly uh, that, that's why much of the world uh, loves diesel engines or has loved diesel engines if you go to Europe you know diesels were prevalent all over um, although from an emission standpoint today you know diesels have uh, diesel exhaust fluid you have to deal with the soot and um, you know the after treatment systems in diesels they have more EGR uh, exhaust gas recirculation to try to cut the NOx down. And so, again, emissions challenges all the way around. But that's kind of the next step into why do we have to have vacuum? The answer is, on a gas engine, we haven't figured out a way to run and control the engine without a throttle. And as long as there's a throttle, we got to have vacuum. I hope that helps. That's all for now.